Welcome to day 12 of Natural Beauty Summit's Detox Your Beauty Regimen Series. I'm Salome Salehi, founder and president at Sugar Sugar Wax, a clean beauty company. And today we'll be talking about poop. A lot. We can't really talk about detoxification without talking about one of the predominant ways that the human body detoxifies. Now, thankfully, today's guest, Tracy Stoniker, is very comfortable talking about this topic. In fact, she spends a great deal of time with her clients as she guides them through their detox journey talking about poop. Tracy is a habit hacker and a detox guru. I mean, she might refer to herself as a detox expert, but trust me when I say she is a detox guru. Aside from having gone through a life-changing detoxification experience herself, she's also really well-versed in the Ayurvedic arts, yoga, and functional medicine. As if that won't keep her busy enough, she is also the host of Detox Diaries podcast and a beautiful soul. Stay tuned. This is not your everyday beauty conversation. Oh. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Tracy Stoniker detox specialist. Now, Tracy has years of detox experience under her belt, both personally and with clients. And we're going to really get into the bits of detox. So I'm super excited to have her with us today. Um, Tracy, I just want to get right into it. And I want to start from the outside in um, and talk about the environmental toxins. Now, when we last spoke, we were talking about um, how environmental toxins have a life cycle. And I'm going to let you talk about that. But can you also talk about like what are some of the top five environmental toxins and how they make their way into our lives? Especially right now, we like especially in first world countries, we live in these super sterile environments, but though the cleanliness per se is also exposing us to more chemicals and like through cleaning products, et cetera, that um, are toxic for our constitution. So I'm gonna let you talk about that. That was a lot. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yes. Um, so when we look at the environment, um, we'll start with, with the big, the gross, right? The, the larger, the macro. Um, we're looking at things like radon. We're looking at lead, mercury, you know, the heavy metals that are, are still lingering around in the environment from the industrial age, right? So constantly toxins are being spewed out into the air. So None of us are immune to breathing these toxins in, and then they settle to the ground, and guess what? They get absorbed in the soil. Then our, our food, whether you're a meat eater or a plant-only eater, you're ingesting these toxins because they are in the soil, they are in the water. So I look at it from the perspective of so many people are like, oh, but I eat so cleanly, and I you know, do all this stuff to, to create an environment that's clean, but we're all breathing the same air. We're all partaking and drinking the same water, and it's toxic. So by default, we this body that you're residing in is toxic. And you know when we start to look at it from the perspective of accepting that and being like, well, great, okay, that sucks. What do I do? Well, we detoxify, right? So we support the body's ability to get rid of the lead, the excess cadmium, the the mercuries, all of this stuff, and and we can start to replace it with these essential nutrients that we need. Um, our soils depleted, so you can be eating all the organic vegetables on the on the planet, but because the soil has been so obliterated, we have to figure out ways to bring that in through supplementation and formulation. So when we look at that, and so yeah. The body is like, oh, I'll hold on to these toxins and I will block these receptor sites for your estrogen through whether it's plastics. You know, we all know 
phthalates and the sulfates and all the other eights and butyls and uh, all these fancy words, they're causing problems in our body, right? And they're blocking our body's ability to function optimally. And ultimately, don't we all just want to feel really good in our body, right? Ultimately, then you start to look good, you know? You know, vanity is your thing, great. <laughs> detox, you'll look better. <laughs> That's actually a really great segue to my next question. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how toxins manifest or how toxins affect our beauty by manifesting in the forms of like psoriasis, eczema, um, rashes, skin sensitivity, acne, yeah. acne a <laughs> lot of inflammatory conditions on the skin. Um, are you able to just talk about that a little bit? What are the systems that are specifically related to the skin? When our skin is screaming, ah, what, who, who inside is talking to us and trying to like get out? Well, and it's interesting because so many times we think all of a sudden I have eczema or all of a sudden I have psoriasis or all of a sudden I'm breaking out. Um, most of the time this has been an underlying condition that just needed to be dealt with and sometimes you get a little knock on the door and you're like ah eh, whatever you know and you continue on and then you get the big giant blow through the door of like full-on outbreak whatever that is for you and so we look at this the liver right it is the hardest working organ i think in our body especially given our circumstances it is always trying to detoxify your body and sometimes if it gets clogged or congested or it gets diseased, these toxins have nowhere else to go. So they start to erupt out in the skin, which is our largest organ, right? We know this, right? It breathes for us. And, and sometimes we're putting things on that are blocking the ability for it to breathe and to do what it's supposed to do. We're not sweating or whatever it is. It's like, well, it's got to come out, right? I always say better out than in, but sometimes it comes out and it's not pretty. So when we start talking about the skin and this, this external representation that we give to the world, it's kind of mirroring what's going on inside, right? Yeah. So we look at it, okay, gosh, you know, I, you know, full disclosure, I worshiped the sun <laughs> for many, many years. Um, being on the beach for eight, nine hours a day was like my favorite pastime. And so, but at the time I was tan and, and not, you know, I'm also a product of the eighties. So being tan and really blonde was the big thing. Right. And so we strove for that every single day. But what I've learned is like, and that damage didn't come out till later on. It's almost like being a Dalmatian, right? It's like, you don't see the damage right away. It takes time for it to start to appear outward. And so some people that journey is slower and some people it's a little quicker. So Whenever we see what's going on with the skin, it's a great indicator of what's going on on the inside of the body. So we want to pay attention. What, what is, what's going on with the liver? Um, well, if your skin is erupting and has inflammation, there's more than likely inflammation going on on the inside of the body. So we take care of the inside, the outside reflects. Let's talk about the liver for a minute because I think it's a very important and often overlooked organ and I think about, you know, our North American lifestyle and, you know, our food and everything and the liver really takes a toll. Now, I have this conversation or argument with my husband regularly. Um, one camp, I'm not going to say who's who, because I don't want to be like, I knew I was right, but I want to get you to validate or like, you know, dismiss the idea. But in terms of drinking. In America, we consume a lot of alcohol. Like it's everywhere, it's easy to get. And like when you're in your 20s, by the time you're in your 20s, it's a part of your lifestyle. So one of us is of the school of thought that alcohol in small doses daily is better than like binge drinking once in a while. Um, the other is saying that like, well, even on a daily, it could have a cumulative effect, which kind of sums up to um, the, you know, like the equivalent of binge drinking. 
Um, I'm not going to tell you who's who, but I feel like you can guess. I think I can. <laughs> okay. So what are your thoughts on like alcohol and the liver? I think in our culture, sorry to yeah, add yeah. this as well, but I think in our culture, alcohol and liver damage are, is really the only thing that's clearly connected medically, general knowledge wise. Um, I, I want you to also get an opportunity to talk about other culprits other than alcohol, but let's just like clear the air with alcohol first. Right. So you know what I'm going to say is it depends on the person. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Because we all have different capabilities of detoxifying the body, right? We all have different capabilities in detoxifying alcohol, just like it would be for coffee or gluten or whatever, it, you know, whatever the other culprit may be. And, you know, we briefly touched on this with epigenetics and we have certain genes that we can turn off and on. And that's the study of epigenetics. Just because you have a gene for something doesn't mean you're going to have that disease unless you turn it on. And this is a choice. Constantly, we have choices. Some people process alcohol better than others, right? So, and I also always say small, consistent action over time creates the most massive impact. So, when you talk about drinking a little bit of alcohol over time, yes, it's going to create its accumulation, right? And if the body is not detoxifying it properly, then if that person continues to drink, they're going to have a problem long-term. I mean, how many alcoholics and smokers even do you know that have lived to be like a hundred, 102, whatever they, they got the good genes, right? <laughs> so they've got those genes that we wish we all had, but you know what we, we are who we are and we just have to accept that and move on. But some people can binge on alcohol and some people can do it and not even get hung over. And that to me is like mind blowing. You know, and think about when we were younger, we could do that more often and recover way quicker. Yeah. So we didn't have as much accumulation though. So think about it. If you binge, if you were binge drinker once a week, all through college, and you continued that through your adulthood and now you're in middle age, you can't do it as much, or you just become an alcoholic and that becomes your norm because feeling like crap is not part of your daily routine right? So you just kind of perpetuate that problem. So alcohol is a huge problem for a lot of people. Um, you know, I constantly listening to the body and how it responds is going to be your best answer to that question. How do you feel when you drink? You know, I used to drink, you know, God, for those people that know me, you know, I, I, I love beer, love beer. <laughs> so I used to go to Asheville, North Carolina, Beer City, USA for a while. And I used to could drink beer, fine. I have one beer now and I feel like crap. So it's like, okay, those days are over for now. Maybe, maybe, you know, as I continue to detoxify my body, maybe one day I can enjoy a beer, you know, but I know going into that event or experience of, of a drink, because Guinness is my favorite, that I know there's going to be repercussions the next day, <laughs> you yeah. know, just like, I know if I go to bed late, I'm going to be tired the next day. Or if I do this, then this, right? But so much about it is the awareness of where your body is and how your body responds because we're all different. And we talked about this a bit, about how our bodies tell us, but we don't necessarily listen. And as you said in the earlier part of this conversation, we don't necessarily listen until it's screaming at us. And we touched on mindset and how we're almost attracted to the things that are not good for us. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think that will, that will kind of lead us into our detox journey and talking more in depth about what you do. So when we have, think about it, going back to an alcohol conversation, you go out one night and you drink a little too much, and the next day you feel like crap. What do you crave? you usually crave crappy food, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the burgers, the fries, McDonald's. Pita chips, you know, whatever that comfort food is for you, that's what you tend to crave because the body is like, I'm in this state, I want more of it, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to being like, I'm in this state, what can I do to get out of it? 
you know, but we want to linger on the couch longer. We want to just like, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to work. I don't want to do that. We start to make these bad decisions based on the fact that we feel bad. So in Ayurveda, you know, I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner and the, the simple truth is like increases like opposites balance each other. And it's, the, it's, it's just the truth across the board. If I feel heavy and cold, do you think eating ice cream is going to make me feel light and warm? No. So, right. So it's just exasperating that condition. And for some reason, we're drawn to that, you know, and it's like, oh, why can't I just choose the things that balance me out? <laughs> you know, I mean, even just taking that extra drink, because in that moment, it feels really good. You're feeling high spirited and alcohol raises the spirit in most people. Some people, it has the opposite effect. So once again, knowing your, how you respond is going to be your biggest indicator of what you should be doing. But sometimes we get hijacked. We know that, right? What's hijacking you? You know, the mindset and the mind is, is it has kind of a, a life of its own sometimes when we let it loose, as opposed to having the awareness and being, okay, if I drink this next drink or if I eat this hamburger or this chip, bag of chips, I'm going to feel like crap. So I'm going to choose up here to not grab for that, right? I'm going to grab water. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, it rarely happens, but it's all learning. And I think one of the reasons why it is so hard to get to that state, or you have to go so far down mm. into the ditch before you realize you need to start making those conscious decisions, is because there's a bit of a lack of awareness in our culture about, like, you talk about being cold and heavy. And I know from our previous conversation that you're referring to Ayurvedic um, constitutions, mm -hmm. but in the Western world, we don't necessarily have those, that awareness or tools of understanding ourselves in multiple facets other than, you know, basic medical, physiological, if that, and most people don't even have that. Um, so I, I, are you able to talk a little bit, just like I know Ayurveda is a big, big topic, but if you can just touch on those three constitutions, because I think the more we learn about ourselves and the different schools of thought of the human body and medicine and health, the more, the better equipped we are to make those kinds of decisions when it comes down to it. Yes. And it's, so it's so valuable, not only for yourself, but also, and we talked about this before, how you respond to other people, right? Because when you understand other, when you understand these simple truths of Ayurveda, especially with the constitutions and people's tendencies, man, does it open up a whole world of, of better relationships because you accept other people where they are, right? And understand, well, I can choose to be this, or I can choose to be this based on that person. So this is where the wisdom comes within. So Ayurveda 101. <laughs> so the way that Ayurveda breaks up um, the physical constitutions, so and the word is dosha. So in Ayurveda, the word we use is dosha for constitution. Constitution is a word that most of us can relate to. You can relate to people being thin or muscular or heavy, right? So we kind of have these mental ideas of what that is, but Ayurveda takes it, of course, way deeper. Um, and so Ayurveda is also based on the five principle, universal principles of energy, right? So you've got space, you've got air, you've got fire, water, and earth. So the same five principles that most of these ancient wisdoms were birthed from in Ayurveda, what we've done is they've the constitution of vata, for example, so there's vata, pitta, and kapha. Those are the three doshas, so the three constitutions. Vata is the combination of air and space. So what does that look like, air and space? When you think of that, you think light, wispy, cool, um, flighty, right? Lots of movement. So vata is the energy and the, the idea of movement and coolness. And then you move to 
combining fire and water. So you get Pitta. And Pitta is the quality of transformation and heat. So we all can probably imagine a person that's heated or intense because it's sharp, it's you know pungent. And we all, we all can relate to someone like that, I'm sure. Um, and then Kapha is the third constitution where we're, you know, the combination of water and earth. So it's more dense, it's structure, it's the quality of, um, you know, in a person, it can represent itself as being a heavier person with a little bigger build, like larger muscles, because Kapha is, is, is solid, right? Solid. <laughs> you know, these words are, it's, it's hard to exchange these words exactly. So these are the three doshas, vata, pitta, kapha. They're in all of us. This is a misconception that people have that we should have, that we should all be balanced, vata, pitta, kapha. Well, it would be a really boring world if all of us had the exact same ratios of vata, pitta, kapha. We'd all be the exact same, and we're not, and we know this, right? So we have all three doshas within us. It's actually within everything, and once you start to see it, everything through an Ayurvedic lens, you're like, oh, that has more kapha, that has more pitta, you know, the tendency also tends to come along with that. So when we're looking at humans, because that's what we're focusing on, a vata constitution is going to tend to be on the lighter side, drier, because we think as you get higher up into air space, it gets drier and drier. A pitta person is going to be, um, tend more towards inflammation right? If you think about fire and, and intensity, and then a kapha person is going to tend to towards more of a weight gain and more congestion because that is the, the tendency of, of vata, I mean of kapha. So these three constitutions reside within all of us. And it's so interesting because people are like, oh, I know my constitution. And then when they dive deep into the, the qualities of the other, oh, they're like, oh, I didn't, I misunderstood that. But what's so great about these constitutions and knowing this about yourself is, like I said before, like increases like, opposites balance each other. I call myself a recovering raw vegan, right? If we think about raw food, the raw food lifestyle, I did it for five years in Chicago, bad idea. First of all, the foods tend to be cold. And a lot of these foods are really hard to digest and they're heavy. The heavy part, fine. The hard to digest part, not so good because vatas tend to not digest well. They, have, they tend towards gassiness and they tend towards erratic um, pooping. Plus I was constipated for 30 years, which is a typical vata imbalance. And so what do we, you know, what do, we do? We wanna balance that out with foods, with herbs, with spices, with exercise, the appropriate movement, the appropriate sleep. It goes into all aspects of our life and even the skincare products we're using, um, what we're exposing ourselves to because all of this becomes feedback for the body and these experiences. So we get to choose wisely how we balance ourselves on so many levels just by knowing this, this powerful information. And then, like I said, you'll know how to deal with other people better, which is... Yeah. I think one of the most beautiful things is because I know a pitta person, my boyfriend, very pitta. He get, he's very intense. He's very driven. He's always, uh, you know, on to the next thing and accomplishing. And, and I'm like, I'm more, I can be a little more laid back than that because I've balanced out my vata enough. And it's just like, I just let him be who he's going to be, you know? I don't want to spark an, um, a confrontation because that fuels a pitta constitution. So it's like, okay. I just know that's who you are and I'll accept that and I know not to engage. Whereas somebody that's more kapha, they might need a little more like, come on, let's go, let's go, come on, get up, let's go do it. Come on, they need a little more kick in the butt per se. So you just get to learn how to deal with people. And then of course, people like myself who are more vata constitution, it's like, oh yeah, she's all over the place. You know, like that's her tendency and that's okay because I, I understand it, right? I'm not going to ever change someone else. I can only change this. Yeah. And it starts here. <laughs> it's so interesting. And I think just having like that basic understanding of tendencies um, helps you understand yourself, make better decisions, know what's good for you, but also um, how you interact with other people based on their tendencies. It's, it's really powerful stuff. Now, I want to talk a little bit about detox because that is what you do. 
And um, I want to hear a little bit more about the detox journey because there's so many different things that we think of as detox. There's, you know, the three day cleanse, the juice cleanse, the master cleanse, there's cleanses, wild rose cleanse, various types of cleanses that are meant to, intended to detox our bodies. Um, you take a little bit of a different approach to it. And then with what we, well, I, I'll just speak for myself with what I've been exposed to and what I've partaked in, in the past. Um, I feel like you do the cleanse, it resets you, then you're good. And then you try to adopt some of those things along the way. And then eventually you kind of steer back to where you were. So then you do another cleanse. Um, you take a very, you have a different philosophy around detox and I'd love to hear about what that journey looks like, though I know it's not the same for everyone. Everyone is different. But if you can give us like a couple of like examples of journeys on opposite ends of the spectrum, like someone who's really toxic, like any day that cancer is going to rear its ugly head to someone who's like pretty like clean and, um, you know, they've they have a good lifestyle, a good, clean, non-toxic lifestyle. So on either end of the spectrum, what do each of those people, what do their journeys look like with detox? Is it just like one thing or like a multiple things? And we talked about peeling back the onion a little bit and yeah. So yes, every person's journey is going to be different. Um, and it depends. How old are you? right? How long have you lived on this toxic planet is going to be a huge factor into what your detox journey looks like. And I will, I mean, full disclosure, I thought I lived a detox lifestyle before. I've done the master cleanse 15 days, 10 days, you know, I've done it many times. Um, I've done so many different cleanses. And what I've, what I now know is that there's a difference between a cleanse and a detox. When we talk about cleansing, because my struggle for so long with constipation, all I wanted to do was just, God, can I just feel empty? Because I strived for that for so many years of just like, if I could just get rid of the, everything in my bowels, everything, just everything, get rid of it. And, you know, going 10, 13 days without food can do that for you. And, you know, I incorporated colonics and enemas. And, you know, I've been on this path for a really long time. I've gone to India. I've done pretty intense detox uh, cleanses there too. Never was able to stay long enough to do the official full panchakarma, which is their version of a detox. So been on this journey forever. I teach yoga. A lot of the poses in yoga are designed to naturally detoxify the body. So that was what I thought detoxification was <laughs> until I found real detoxification, which is, it's like <laughs> cleanse on steroids. So when we talk about detoxification, we're removing toxins from the body. Cleansing is cleansing out the body. So just by the, the words themselves should give an indication of the difference. So when we start talking about a true detox, we're talking about going after these pathogens in the body that are causing so many problems. We're talking about getting, getting rid of, you know, in so many levels of everything, Ayurveda, yoga, um, detoxifying, we start with the gross, the, the bigger, and we start to move down towards the more subtle, right? In yoga, for example, we, we move the body and we're doing all these poses that are all fancy and pretty and all that stuff and a struggle for a lot of people. But ultimately, yoga is about the mind. That's so subtle, right? But how is how does this physical have to do with that? Well, it's a vehicle to get there, right? So when we talk about detoxing, remove, we have to remove the big guys first, right? I've lived a clean, you know, I'll tell you my story. I've lived a clean lifestyle. I've done yoga. I've, you know, I've done all the right things. I, you know, did cloth diapers for my children. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I have indoor gardens. I compost. I do it all, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's been an evolution for sure. But when I started truly detoxing, thinking, you know, I probably have mercury in my body because my mother, mother was a dental hygienist. And I was around the dental office all the time. Plus I had, you know, fillings when I was a kid. And that to me is like, okay, well, how, sure, I'll just cleanse the body versus, wow, when I started truly detoxing, I'm like pooping out 20 inch worms. 
what the hell, right? Like, you know, the first time it's like, oh my God, what is going on? You know, when you, when you see this and, you know, that just was a trigger to tell me, wow, I've been tested, you know, I'm also in functional medicine. So I've done the lab testing on my gut, came out clean, you know, nothing out of balance, whatever, but yet I'm later on, I'm still finding worms. Yeah. So fun. Um, and so it's like, okay, well, if I think that, if that happens to me, who, who's been living this lifestyle for 30 years, 40 years, wow, imagine what other people are experiencing. And so ends of the spectrum, not everybody's going to poop out worms. If you don't have worms, that's not going to be your thing. But for those people that think, in, if you think you're not toxic, I hate to tell you you're wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, Worms may not be the obstacle to get to those deeper rooted heavy metals because they, they lodge themselves into the body in places where they're not easy to get rid of. And A, you don't want to get rid of them unless the body's prepared. So we go through a process. And so you were saying, you know, how I approach it differently. I approach it way differently now. When I work with clients, you have to be pooping consistently. I talk about poop all the time. <laughs> Every conversation ends up talking about poop. But if you're not pooping every day, if not twice a day, I would not target these deeper rooted, heavier metal, heavy metals and things of that nature, because what are they going to do? They're going to get into the system and they're just, they're not going to be eliminated. They're just going to bounce around and find somewhere else to take residence. And then all of a sudden your right knee hurts where it used to be your left hip or whatever. So we start talking about, let's get the, the pathways, the elimination pathways working. And we're talking pooping because that's the big gross thing that we see but what about your lymphatic system what about the glymphatic system which is the brain's detoxification system so we have to go a little slower and some people it takes two years three years four years some people can do it really quickly depending you know this is once again we're all different so on either end of the spectrum somebody could do a detox really fast and they might not have worms, they might not have accumulated um, different pathogens along the way, but they might have an underlying condition like Epstein-Barr or Lyme disease. These are diseases and viruses that live in the joints and they're like, I don't understand, I just don't feel good. Men come with erectile dysfunction, these things that are so common, but yeah. no one's addressing these underlying toxins that could be in the way of true health. So. I look at it now, it's more of a, a, it's, it's a lifestyle, right? It's not like a one and done. You know, people think, oh, I cleansed, I'm good for the year. No, because it would be one thing if we could remove ourselves from this toxic soup that we live in, but we can't. We're constantly being bombarded and toxins are constantly being reintroduced into the body. So yes, to do an intense detox first and then maintain and continually um, coming across different ways that you can remove because the number one thing is we want to remove it right so how do we remove it from a the body but then start to look around your environment right what are the products you're using what's the air life that you're breathing you know and and I look at you know the whole idea of aging is is this mindset that drives me insane because there's an expectation when you hit a certain age, certain things just happen, right? It's like menopause, women, oh, I'm going to get hot flashes because that's normal. Well, it's not normal. It's common, but it's not normal. And so what's the problem? You're probably toxic and we need to remove the toxins so the body can, you know, acclimate through this amazing process with much more grace and ease. So I think fundamentally and foundationally, we should be talking detoxify the body before you start even throwing supplements and vitamins and you know all this stuff but but layer on top of that organic foods you know what can you do can you get rid of the plastics can you start using things that are fundamentally going to support a detoxification lifestyle versus continually to bombard the body yeah because then it represents itself outward you know like going full circle back to the beginning of the conversation for sure. Um, now, I have to say, it sounds intimidating when you talk about it, mm -hmm. but um, I know that the way you work with people is you kind of take them on a journey of like what they're ready for. 
And I mean, can you like talk a little bit about maybe an example of, you know, someone who's not ready to do a complete overhaul of their life and food and like products and everything. What is that? What is the more gradual way to get into it? And what do you see when, when you do take people along this gradually? Um, what do you see? Like, does it sort of, they start seeing the benefits and it takes a life of their own and then they're just kind of run off with it and they continue and it becomes a lifestyle thing. Or is it like everything else in life? Like one step forward, two steps back. <laughs> and you know, every person is going to be different. And I never, I, my, my biggest thing when I work with you is meet you where I meet you where you are. I can't expect you to be somewhere else nor should you expect me to be, you know, this is, this is where you are and let's honor that. Right. Uh, so much about it is just having the awareness. Like we talked about before, once you shine the light on something, it's always there, right? Yeah. You can never look at it the same way again. It's like walking down a, a path and you see um, a rope that you pass every day. And then one day that rope moves. It's a snake. That is no longer a rope to, you know, up here that, oh gosh, now there's a snake, you know? And so it's like that light has been shone, shown upon something. For example, yes, it is. It, when we start to detox, it, it's, but once again, it's a slower journey. So we don't want to rattle the body too much. You know, there's so much that we do um, through, through the program that I have where we're supporting the body with minerals and, and, and supporting the mitochondrial function because detoxing can be a burden on the body, right? we've come accustomed to being toxic. So that's what the body's normal has become. So when you start to rattle things, you know, it, it takes energy from the body to move through that. So what we do, support always, and we move as slowly as, literally three, three years, some people are working on detoxing and we do it in phases and, and it's personalized for every single person because when you start to look at it from the Ayurvedic constitution, what can that person handle versus what can they, what, what can their body can handle versus what the mind can handle? Cause they might not be in sync sometimes, you know, and then they want to give up. Right. And it's like, okay, well, baby steps. And I, like I said before, small, consistent action creates the most massive impact. So if that. we're doing smaller things on a regular basis, I didn't, you know, start composting overnight. It was an evolution of like, being aware, just being aware. And, you know, when you're looking around at your house, like in the shower, for example, now you'll never look at this the same way. <laughs> Hopefully you're looking at the shower and usually, you know, you have the, the, the holder of all your shampoos and stuff in front of you or sitting along. You know, it's a small space. Just look at it and be like, I wonder what's in that. You don't have to change anything at all, but just get curious. So much about this is Let's just spark that curiosity in people it's so that now they're making choices based on education. You know, I, I, the marketers out there and these big companies love ignorance. They love it. So the more educated we become as consumers, the more power that we have. So I think education and things like this and learning, what are the things in your products? What are the things in your air? What is in your food, right? Look at the labels. And they're very creative and it gets harder and harder because all these new words pop up for the same toxin. So we have to be really careful. So it's like, uh, you know, going back to Michael Pollan, eat real food, <laughs> you know, <laughs> mostly plants and, you know, but just eat real food, choose real food. Um, you know, we're moving into summer. I think food, real food is becoming more abundant. So, you know, go out to your farmer's market, see what's available just enjoy it, you know, go for a walk in nature. I say that I think the most powerful things that we can do for detoxifying the body are free. Sleep, sleep, um, huge topic of conversation around detoxifying because so much happens while we're sleeping. And if you're not sleeping at the right time, things can't happen. So then accumulation happens. This is why I look at, you know, is it aging or is it accumulation? Yeah. Are you aging? Well, we're all getting older, of course. You know, we're, we keep spinning around the sun. Otherwise, we'd be dead. So I, I embrace the idea of, you know, of, of getting older because there's no alternative. 
right? Except death. So embrace that. That's not going to change. But what can you do during that time to make it more meaningful, you know, and more powerful and, and, and healthy, you know, and the simple things, simple things, sleep, one of the hugest ones, get out in nature, be outside, breathe fresh air, right? Yeah. And, and just embrace this natural rhythm that we have with nature versus fighting it. I say this, I say this a lot. The boomerang has to come back. <laughs> you know, we've gotten so far from the nature that eventually we're going to swing back around and get back to it. And that's when we're going to see diseases start to decline and our children are going to be healthier instead of this horrible thing that's happening right now. I mean, children are now getting aged, aging d diseases. And it's like, is that aging? No, not when you're getting it at 30 or 20 or even younger. It's like, no, these are not diseases of aging. These are diseases of accumulation of toxins over time. I love that. I love that. That is so great. And such a great note to end on. And I think, um, the real takeaway from all of this is from, uh, the perspective of approaching detoxing, not even getting into detoxing. It's a great idea to just educate yourself on the things that matter, like your food, your water, um, your doshas, your constitutions, your nature, however you want to look at it. Um, so the step one is really education. And then from that, then you can, you know, choose your detox journey from there. And I think that's, I love that approach because I think people like, like we have a culture of accumulation a lot where not, not just in terms of detox, just in terms of like what we do, you know, mm -hmm. we have this, but like, I need another shirt or like my white t-shirt isn't white and fresh anymore. So accumulation and like, I'm, not feeling healthy, I'm not going to deduct anything, but I'm going to add. If I add, 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 add. And uh, what's great and interesting that's happening right now with this whole COVID thing is because we're forced to kind of be stagnant, um, we're also forced to fall back in line with like the rhythms of nature. Like you want to go outside because you can't stand being in your house for another five minutes. Okay, you too. You know, children, you know, people that are home with their kids for the first time ever, they don't know what it's like. You know, it's like, okay, just go for a walk, right? Yeah. I say for any listener that isn't driving or isn't doing anything right now, what are you doing? Can you stand up and, and walk around the room? Can you put headphones on and walk outside? Can you do a jumping jack? You know, whatever that is, move the body free. Once again, get the lymphatic system going, doing the smallest things consistently over time, create lasting effects. So yeah. And you know, it's interesting. There's a, there's a saying, a belief system in Ayurveda where the mind plays these games. We always want what we don't have. And then we don't want what we do have. You know, I want those cute red shoes. God, I wish I didn't have all these wrinkles. Right. So it's this amazing dynamic that the mind plays on our, on our choice. It, 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 it's the underlying factor to our choices that we make too. When is enough enough, you know, yeah. when, and when it's too much, things have to happen. You know, there's, there's a tipping point, right? And for those of us that experience chronic fatigue, um, that was an issue for me, um, constipation, um, food sensitivities for other people. It can be, <clears throat> excuse me, fibromyalgia. It can be Crohn's disease. It can be cancer. However it manifests in your particular body, it's going to be different for all of us, but we can prevent this. It's all preventable. If we give the body the right tools it's need, it needs to be able to take on this bombardment that, you know, we've evolved over thousands and thousands, millions of years, right? This short time span that we've had with these toxins, our body has not been able to adapt. So disease is what's happening. That's the adaptation. So we want to get to a point where we're keeping the body clean enough so that, you know, you know, even future generations will be set up for success, right? You know, 
and right now is a real opportunity. Yeah, and right now is a real opportunity to you know start thinking about these things, and um, you know be more aware of ourselves, our bodies, our circumstances. A lot of people, because of all the changes we've experienced from COVID, have either reached or surpassed that tipping point. And I think starting with you know yourself, your body your feelings, your thoughts, like all of that is a great, like it's a great opportunity to start really looking at that mm -hmm. and paying attention to what our body is asking for. Right. And if you look at the, the statistics on COVID, you know, most of the people that are really suffering from this have underlying conditions. Mm -hmm. And I look at that and it's like, okay, preventatively speaking, moving forward, are you prepared for the next pandemic? Whatever that is, whether, you know, we've had SARS, we've had um, uh, numerous other diseases that have come and hit the world. And, you know, going back to the simple statement, the strong will survive. So it's like, what can you do to prepare yourself for the next one? One's coming, we just don't know what it looks like yet, but you know, there, there's a cycle to this. And the stronger that you build your immunity system now and you lessen the burden on the system and your immune system's up here, the pathogens, you know, there's always going to be something is way down here. Then you, you don't have to deal with this, this balancing act of back and forth and back and forth. And okay, I've cleansed, I've cleansed, but now I'm going back to my old ways. Okay, but I got to cleanse again. It's like, let's lower this load, build up this load and so you are just able to embrace all of it without fear because so much about this is fear and i would love it if people and that of course is a toxin in and of itself you know because that perpetuates bad choices and on and on and on it's like what can we do to support you what can you do right now because there's no other time than yeah. right now what can you do right now what's one small change that you can make right now to create massive impact later on I love that. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, that's Tracy. We'll have all her links. Any um, final, I think that was a great way to end <laughs> it. Like just what is one thing? Ask yourself, your wisdom lives in your body and you can access that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you want to hear more about toxin or detoxing and Tracy will include all the links so you have access to her as well. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and talking about all this great stuff. Um, I think your work is becoming increasingly more important and recognized right now. This is the time. So I'm really glad we're shedding a light on it. Me too. Yes. Yes. I mean, ultimately, my goal is to get people's bodies in a place where they can be exposed to something and beat it yeah. you know and 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 so we're not living in fear and we're not and we're able to embrace so many things that we didn't think were possible before i love that i love that perfect note to end on thanks for joining us everyone thank you tracy we'll talk soon